Okay, we're going to go on to worksheet 5.2. For worksheet 5.2, we're going to dive deeper in into knowing about, you know, how each of the elements are different depending on the proton, the neutrons, and the electrons. So, first up, okay, we're going to look at question 1. The diagram below shows the chemical symbol of helium. Okay, of helium. Now, so, there's this number 4 over here and a number 2 over here. So if you look at a textbook, by now you should realize that the two terms are proton number. Like for this number two here, it's, on, it's known as the proton number. Sorry, I wrongly. It's known as the proton number. Or the other name is the atomic number. Okay? So this one actually means that the atom has two protons. But actually one thing I, I like to highlight is that based on this fact, you actually be able to find out um, if you put these two together, it tells you that the number of atoms, okay, determines, eh, sorry, not number of atoms, my bad, huh? uh, the number of protons determine what element it is. So all helium all helium will have only two protons. Whereas again, all heliums will have two protons. So if you see that an element has only two protons, means that it definitely must be a helium. Okay, so the number two at the bottom, which is the proton number, atomic number, okay, tells you the number of protons, yes, so it tells you what element it is. With reference to the chemical symbol above, what are the two terms given to number four? So number four is also known as the nucleon number. Or the other word is also called the mass number. Now, what's important about this four is that because it's the nucleon number, it tells you the number of particles in the nucleus. So actually, number of particles in the nucleus equals to how many protons and how many neutrons there are. Okay? So this is what the number four tells you. It tells you the nucleon number. Or sometimes we call it the mass number. Number two here tells you the atomic number, or what we call the proton number. So how many protons and neutrons does helium have? So based on the number two at the bottom, because it's called the proton number, so I have two protons. So this is based on proton number. Okay, so based on proton number. How about number of neutrons? You can see here, the nucleon number is proton plus neutron. A proton number is 2. So to find neutron, can you see? I'll just take P plus N. This is the nucleon number. Minus the number of proton, which is from here. What you're going to get is number of neutrons. Okay? So that's why it is a 4 minus 2 over here. So in total, helium have 2 protons, 2 neutrons. So we're going to do a little bit more. We're going to go into the various elements here. So the next one. With reference to the periodic table, determine number of protons for each of the elements listed below. So the number of protons as mentioned, you just look for the smaller number. Okay, sorry. Look for the... Sorry, I'm not smaller. Look for the atomic number of the element. Okay, what's the other name for atomic number? Look for the proton number of the element. So the atomic number or the proton number for each of the element for, he for hydrogen is 1, boron is 5, nitrogen is 7. Same thing, lithium is 3, carbon is 6, fluorine is 9. So you can find all of these details in your periodic table. So please make sure you go and check it out. Okay, make sure you understand which is the proton or atomic number. Now, I'll just add a highlight. And the atomic and proton number of the element is always the smaller number. So for example, lithium is Li37. 3 is a smaller number. Means that that must be the proton number. So if the lithium is 3. For carbon is 6, 12. So the proton number is a smaller number over here. Okay, for fluorine, it is 9, 19. So this is the proton number. Okay, quite simple now. So let's go on to the next one. 
determine the number of nucleons for each of the elements. So actually they are just asking you to determine what is the nucleon number. Another name for this is also called the mass number. So for each of these elements, okay, the nucleon number is actually just the bigger number. Okay, so for example, let's use boron. Boron is 511. You can see 11 is the bigger number. It tells you the number of nucleons. Nitrogen, 714. 14 is the bigger number. It tells you the number of nucleons. So this is what you can determine from the chemical symbol that you can find for each element in the periodic table. Now, last one, with reference to periodic table, determine the number of neutrons for each of the elements. So, how to find number of neutrons? It's actually by taking the nucleon number minus the proton number. So, to find this, is to take nucleon number minus the proton, minus the proton number. Okay, so the nucleon number minus the proton number, you get each of this. So, nucleon number of hydrogen is 1. Proton number for hydrogen is 1. So to get this, it's actually just a 1 minus 1, you get 0. For boron, it's 11 minus 5. Nitrogen is 14 minus 7. So based on, it's really based on what we have found so far. So 7 minus 3, 12 minus 6, 19 minus 9. Okay, where did I get all this number? Because fluorine is 99, carbon is 12, 6. Lithium is 7,3, hydrogen is 1, 1, boron is 11,5, nitrogen is 7,14. Okay, so this is where I get all the 14 and 7, 11 and 5, 1 and 1. So it's the nucleon number, subtract the proton number, or to be layman about, I think the bigger number minus the. Okay, now question 5 is. Um, it's just to lead up to the next part. Okay, but the key idea here is what does the term electrically neutral mean? Electrically neutral means overall, okay, it means the positive torque is equal to the electrically neutral means. So if the positive and the negative charges are equal, it means that the negative charges will cancel out the positive charges. And how can I have positive charges equals to negative charges? If you remember in worksheet 5.1, we say protons have a relative charge, okay, of plus 1. Electrons have a relative charge of minus 1. So you can see if I got one proton, if I got one electron, it will be a plus 1, minus 1. Overall, it will become 0. So all atoms practically will have the same number of protons and same number of electrons. So example, if I were to use nitrogen. And for nitrogen, you realize you say, oh, sure, the number of protons is 7. So for nitrogen, okay, I know that there are 7 protons. And nitrogen, if it's an atom, it must be electrically neutral. Means that the number of protons must be equal to the number of electrons. So my nitrogen, if I have 7 protons, it means it must also have 7 electrons. In this way, I know the charge is plus 7 because of proton. Because the electron is minus 7, overall they will cancel out, become 0. So, by applying this electrically neutral uh, concept, you know that all atoms must have protons equals to electrons. Okay, number of protons equals to number of electrons. Okay, so that's for this worksheet over here. That's the end, I guess. Oh, no, sorry. So one more, part six. So which particle listed below are electrically neutral? Typically, we're just looking out for the proton, must be equals to electrons. So we can just ignore this column, just focus on this and this. 12, 12, yes. One proton, one electron. Yes, electrically neutral. Now, this one, 19 proton, 18 electron. So imagine it's a plus 19 because I've got 19 protons. Minus 18 because only 18 electrons. So it's not electrically neutral. 
overall the charge of this thing is a plus one because I got one positive charge mode. Okay. 20 protons, 18 electrons. So you know the overall charge is a plus two because I got 20 protons, 18 electrons. It's a plus 20 minus 18. E, particle E, I got 9 protons, so it's a plus 9. 10 electrons, so it's a minus 10. So overall, plus 9, minus 10, so overall this is a minus 1. So it's also not electrically neutral. Same for this, i sorry, same for this, plus 3, minus 2, overall, plus 1. This one, 7 and 10, so plus 7, because of 7 protons, plus 7. 10 electrons, minus 10. So overall charge, plus 7 minus 10 is a minus 3. Last one, 11 protons, 11 neutrons, yes, electrically neutral. So this is the overall summary here in terms of what they are. I'll just add on this term here. If they are positively charged, if they are positively charged, we call positively charged, so we call it cat ion, cat ion. If they are negatively charged, or it's a negative charge, then we call it a N ion. Okay, it's a word together, it's called N ion. Now, if they are electrically neutral, we call them atom. Okay, so you can only call a particle an atom when the number of protons equals number of electrons because they are electrically neutral. Once they are not electrically neutral, you can't call them an atom anymore. You actually change the term to either a cation or an ion, depending on whether is it positive or negatively charged. Okay, this last part here is just a little summary exercise for everyone. So you can just go back and do it on your own. I will not go through this part too much. So that's all. Thank you very much.